afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of our Mortal Kombat franchise documentary. I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only Mela Lee, who voiced the role of Jade in Mortal Kombat 11 and in numerous other Mortal Kombat uh, games as well. I suppose, uh, Mela, in terms of Mortal Kombat, uh, can you remember growing up as a, a child? What are your early sort of memories of Mortal Kombat? Did you hear of it in your sort of childhood days and your teens growing up? Of course. I, I think, I'm not sure if anyone hadn't heard of Mortal Kombat, um, but I didn't play. I, I didn't have um, a computer when I was younger as much, or it was for the family, and I was meant to study, so I didn't get to play video games as much as I would like. So in my career right now, I kind of have a second childhood, and I'm pretty excited to be a part of something so iconic. And I suppose, Mela, in terms of uh, Mortal Kombat, the first movie came out in 1995 and the second movie came out in 1997. Did you get to see those movies yourself? No, <laughs> I didn't. I think they were probably a little bit too violent for, for where I was at at the time. <laughs> and uh, Mela, in terms of uh, the character Jade, she's been a, a never sort of present in the last decade or so in terms of uh, Mortal Kombat. A, a sort of... Um, what I'd say is a conniving sort of a character in terms of trying to start trying to doing everything to aid her own sort of survival and a sort of playing off uh, characters against each other to try and get her own sort of a mate. And uh, by seeing a character like that, you have to do a bit of uh, research into the character's background to get a sort of feel for her. Um, I think that they gave us really great scripts this time around. Um, it was about 386 pages. Because for MK11, we had alternate universes, it was about three or four movie scripts worth. And so you get an idea of who she is as a revenant, you know, in a better world when, when things go her way. But her, her makeup is so slightly different from, from being human. She is divine. I don't mind that at all. And um, I think she's very outcome oriented. So where she might be seen as a bit conniving, um, I think strategic is a better word, and that she's very objective. And when we did audition originally, um, I didn't know it was for her. So it was NDA, it was very generalized script. They don't wanna give away that they're working on a project. This was a couple of years ago. And um, it was for Guard A, for a Warner Brothers game. So I thought it was for a really small character, but I gave it my all. Um, I think the lines were, you shall not pass. You seem confident. Now you seem overconfident. And so she was very measured as somebody was approaching her to cross her path. And when my agent called and said that I got the role, I was excited to be Guard A, whatever that was. And um, then after we signed the non-disclosure agreements and all the confidentiality agreements, as I was driving onto the lot, um, I saw the email and it said, Jade. And I thought, no. <laughs> but I walked in and they said, you do know what this is for. And I thought, Mortal Kombat, but still not quite understanding. And they said, yes, and you've been cast as Jade. And the inner eight-year-old child for me was just like what and um in person though I was like oh that's really brilliant that's great but just shaking and nervous and it's definitely a dream role yeah, yeah and when you saw the the character drawings or the drawings for Jade for the first time for Mortal Kombat 11 obviously your voice role but you obviously want to see what your character will look like you sort of taken aback by the terms of the animation and in terms of the graphic for your character Yes, um, just I loved that she was much more of a warrior than a courtesan, which is how she'd been drawn before, which is lovely. It made people very attracted to her. But I loved the Indo-Asian and African mix that she had, um, you know, having a multicultural background myself it really resonated with me being Polynesian and, and um, Creole and Ethiopian. So it was beautiful to see the depth of not only her character drawing, but even facial features and um, that they'd really given her uh, an outfit that would be a little bit more suitable in war. <laughs> and I'm glad that she's curvy, but I loved, I loved the, the detail 
of who she was and that she was more than just a beautiful woman. She had become a goddess, a warrior goddess. And I suppose, Mela, most people, uh, dare I say, they play more combat uh, for, the, for the fighting teams and for the actors themselves. But uh, in terms of, you take out the fighting element and you put Mortal Kombat, the cut to the door, put to the standard old movie. You can actually watch it on YouTube. They're like three, three and a half hours sort of long. Uh, real sort of, those are sort of, the animation in terms of that sort of movie and the story background, that is something you could go as, a bring, uh, go to cinema and sort of watch so detailed and so animated. And if you never actually played the Mortal Kombat game, you could, all those put things, together you could actually enjoy it you're absolutely right and i remember phil amar is a friend but also i look up to him he's so talented and he plays kotal khan and um it was amazing to see that scene i remember we were doing a scene where she asks him you know why he hasn't married and when he says they weren't you it was such a lovely love scene and um like heart pitter patter kind of a thing and uh Again, yes, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big UFC MMA fighting um, fan, so the fighting's not terrible to me, but I love that the story was rich and the animation and graphics have been really stunning. Yeah, I suppose in terms of Mortal Kombat, it's a huge fan base all over the world. Uh, in Brazil, to Argentina, to South Africa, England, Ireland, Germany, USA, maybe the coffee sold worldwide. So when you're involved in a project like that and you're voicing a character, and a character has recognized you, somebody that does the week, you know, kind of check up to find who they do. And obviously, you're or someone actually uh, does a bit of research and see who is vice the role of they do. Plays. But very sort of few people have done that in terms of going back even the last 20, 20 years. It's not like there's a list of 10 or 20 people, it's like four or five sort of maximum in terms of actor, actors and the vice over actors. How how intro, how enthralling is that for you in terms of your career to be associated with a franchise spanned nearly thirty years at this stage as going no sign going down? It was by far the largest role of my career, so I was absolutely over the moon. Um, and I was also working on a, a small project at the time that I thought was going to be Titanfall three that turned into Apex Legends. So in the same year, I got to be Jade in Mortal Kombat and Lifeline. For Apex Legends and um, to be a part of that was was extraordinary and um, I'm very grateful for all of my roles but in the last decade the depth of female roles and roles for diversity have have been greatly improved and so to be able to be a part of that and to celebrate that with my father and and that side of my family was was intense also being Princess Xanda for the Black Panthers quest series for Marvel so those three things all came in the same year. And um, to be part of legacy projects like that is, I mean, that's, that's, that's the dream for your career. I mean, I want to continue working and I have some great projects coming up, but it was an extraordinary moving and soul satisfying situation to be a part of so many beautiful projects, especially Jade and Lifeline and Black Panther's Quest. And I suppose, Mela, you mentioned uh, your, your role as Jade, and dare I say, it's not reminiscing about the past, you still are currently passing the role of Jade in terms of uh, future Mortal Kombat games, uh, you're very much part of the Mortal Kombat sort of franchise at the moment, uh, you currently hold the hot seat in terms of uh, Jade. Uh, in terms of uh, transitions of video games uh, to movies, uh, sometimes it works out, fighting games, Sometimes it doesn't. If you look back in the, the past, maybe where some uh, franchises like Mortal Kombat have succeeded, others like Tekken and Street Fighter, who are big rivals, have failed to do. Why do you think there's a real draw and a sense of uh, wanting for the Mortal Kombat sort of movie? Is it just that rich sort of vast sort of vast sort of scripts and backgrounds for every sort of characters? And also, is it is it also is it mainly because Mortal Kombat is what it says in the title. It's mortal, really. Nearly all the good guys are mortal, and even the enemies have a touch of real mortalism. It's not dinosaurs or UFOs. Even those these bad mortals, they do have special powers, but at the end of the day, there are people playing the world of mortal. 
Yeah, I think it's been very powerful. I think the interactive gaming industry sort of snuck up as an art form. Uh, I don't think it was taken quite as seriously as it as it is now. But, you know, as a woman, I think there were a lot of conversations about the violence or or the, the, the morality of games. But what we missed is we now have a generation of, of people who have grown up seeing, you know, working side by side with people with different value sets and moral sets from different planets. Um, and as a woman, we've seen women side by side in, in very vital roles. And I'm very um, honored to be a part of that. And the storytelling, you know, even though it is fighting, like what you've just said about it being humanity and more, you know, the mortality of this, the, the finite quality of the struggle that we have as hum human beings. I think that's why it's resonated um, over this, this last two decades and three, um, as you've mentioned, that it is an epic hero story. This is, this is our Odyssey and Iliad you know, of our time are these games um, like Mortal Kombat that stretch across decades. And we get to visit the story, you know, as children, as teenagers, as adults, and really understand the concept of the finite nature of our quest as human beings and in that gaming world. I think it's an extraordinary art form and Mortal Kombat I, very much so uh, at the forefront of what's become, I think, a worldwide storytelling format that is much more universal and as you pointed out I have you know fans that will reach out and speak to me from all over the world from Ireland Australia um, Brazil Oman Saudi Arabia Turkey um, and what's interesting is governmentally speaking as human beings we may have differences but just as people playing this game it's really brought us together there's a whole other universe it's created where we get to work and and manage life side by side. Yeah, and I suppose Mela just bringing on up the new movie that's been released in uh, 2021, the Marvel yes. movie. Uh, in terms of that, um, I, I I saw a quote there from Lewis Penn uh, during the week, who was playing one of the actors in the movie, and he was just saying that uh, it's very sort of dark in the terms of where. The, the Dark Knight was in terms of where the Joker was in terms of being R-rated it's sort of very much true homage to the sort of the game and it's sort of in terms of the darkness of the sort of movie in it and do you think that back in two decades ago that wouldn't have been acceptable for uh, movie makers producers that uh, would have put the curve and say whoa you can't, there's a barrier you can't sort of Hold on. So do you think the likes of the Dark Knight and the Joker have opened up uh, those avenues now for uh, projects like Mortal Kombat that do contain a sort of real dark sort of sinister element to sort of drive it? People seem more wanting of that and more acceptable of that where back in the 90s films were, were made a bit camp in their nature to sort of protect that sort of uh, element. I think it's a great observation. Um, I think Mortal Kombat, you know, definitely um, can say thank you to the Joker and the Dark Knight, but I, I really also think that uh, on a greater scale, it's the amalgamation of Eastern and Western storytelling. And now that we have so much of this, the internet over the last two decades has allowed us to to understand cultures in a way that we wouldn't have before. And Eastern storytelling isn't necessarily about good versus evil. Um, we're all in the gray and it's us in alternate situations, alternate universes, learning to survive, learning to work together. And so I think there was a, a naivete in storytelling worldwide, especially in Western storytelling that didn't allow us to explore the darker aspects of our characters as human beings. What happens when we have a bad choice and a terrible choice? Not a good one and a bad one. And as we've evolved as, as human beings, as cultures, and as storytellers, we're, we're willing to explore the darker factors of humanity and, and what we would do in, in a darker situation. And I think we grow. I think those stories are very vital to those of us, especially in times like now, when we're in the middle of a dark age. But in this darkness, in this, this lockdown or plague or whatever you want to call it, 
we are exploring different ways to communicate, different ways to celebrate, different things to savor. And there is a beauty that can only come from darkness. There is a joy that only comes from desolation. And you'll see, I think, not only in, in the movies that you've pointed out, The Joke in the Dark Knight and, and Mortal Kombat upcoming, but in our gaming, that it's, it's a reprinting of humanity and, and how we process the life and the age that we live in now. I suppose, uh, Mela, one last question uh, to finish off uh, this interview. Uh, just in terms of if there was a Mortal Kombat dictionary created in tomorrow morning, and they put the character G in the dictionary, and they left two blank sentences underneath. And they ask you, Mel Ali, uh, uh, you portray Jade, your uh, voice of Jade, and they ask you to write those sentences. What would you like those you, you broke up for just a second. If they asked me what, can you repeat, please? Ask you to write those two uh, sentences in the dictionary, to summarize uh, what, Jade, what Jade means to you, or the characters are to be having trade or having voice or role, what would you like those two sentences to read? Hmm. You ask the hard ones, don't you? Jade is a warrior goddess okay. in search of light and darkness, strength and weakness, and meaning in life. Uh, on that note, Mel Ali, a pleasure talking to you uh, today. To relive, uh, not relive, I suppose, uh, uh, just uh, mem jog your memories because uh, you currently are playing uh, Jade in Mortal Kombat. Uh, thanks for sharing uh, your memories. Thanks for your portrayal of uh, Jade in Mortal Kombat 11. No doubt there's uh, future projects in the horizon for you and who knows, maybe a cameo role in the new Mortal Kombat movie in that. 2021 if the producers are looking on that. Bella, a pleasure talking to you today. Take care and stay safe. You as well. Peace and wellness to you and your family and everyone watching and listening. Fight.